cross, he reigned and above the world, cross of our Savior King. O cross, he reigned and above the world, cross of our Savior King. Found from which gush the waters, straight from the wood in his side. of our Savior King. O cross of lime and refulgent tree, cross of our Savior King. O cross of lime and refulgent tree, cross of our Savior King. Jesus through thee has saved us. Great was the price that he paid. Thou art the folly of love divine, cross of our Savior King. O cross, thou channel of grace divine, cross of our Savior King. O cross, thou channel of grace divine, cross of our Savior King, tree on which death was conquered, thou the first altar of love. Jesus the Lamb gave his life on thee, cross of our Savior King. A hearty welcome to each one of you, my dear brothers and sisters, to this Eucharistic celebration of love peace and joy. We pray especially for our senior citizens, elderly and sick brothers and sisters. We pray that you may be blessed with the grace and strength and good health of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Along with this intention, we also pray for your intentions, dear friends, that you have placed before our Lord and Savior. We ask the Lord to bless you, guide you, and strengthen you. Let us begin this Holy Eucharist by signing ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in heaven or on earth beneath or in the waters under the earth. 
you shall not bow down to them or serve them for i the lord your god am a jealous god and i punish the fathers fault in the sons the grandsons and the great grandsons for those who hate me but i show kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments you shall not utter the name of the lord your god to misuse it for the lord will not live unpunished the man who utters his name to misuse it remember the sabbath day and keep it holy for 6 days you shall labor and do all your work but the 7th day is a sabbath for the lord your god you shall not work that day neither you nor your son nor your daughter nor your servants men or women nor your animals nor the stranger who lives with you for in 6 days the lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that these hold but on the 7th day he rested that is why the lord has blessed the sabbath day and made it sacred honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the lord your god has given to you you shall not kill you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor you shall not covet your neighbor's house you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his servant man or woman or his ox or his donkey or anything that is his the word of the lord thanks, thanks be, be to, to god. god responsorial psalm you lord have the message of eternal life you lord have the message of eternal life the law of the lord is perfect it revives the soul the rule of the lord is to be trusted it gives wisdom to the simple response your lord have the message of eternal life the percepts of the lord are right they gladden the heart the command of the lord is clear it gives light to the eyes response your lord have the message of eternal life the fear of the lord is holy abiding forever the decrees of the lord are truth and all of them just response your lord have the message of eternal life they are more to be desired than gold than the purest of gold and sweeter are they than honey than honey from the comb response your lord have the message of eternal life already from the first letter of saint paul to the corinthians chapter 1 verses 22 to 25 the crucified christ the power and wisdom of god while the jews demand miracles and the greeks look for wisdom you are we preaching a crucified christ to the jews an obstacle that they cannot get over to the pagans madness but to those who have been called whether they are jews or greeks a christ who is the power and the wisdom of god for god's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and god's weakness is stronger than human strength the word of the lord thanks, thanks be, be to, to god. god 
Gospel Acclamation Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 2, verses 13 to 25. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And in the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over and said to the pigeon sellers, Take all this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, What sign can you show us to justify what you have done? Jesus answered, Destroy this sanctuary, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build this sanctuary. Are you going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem, for the Passover, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew them all and did not trust themselves to them. He never needed evidence about any man. He could tell what a man had in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the third Sunday of Lent. And all the Sundays, we see Jesus in various and different places. And all the places, we see a different scenario of our Savior Jesus. In the first Sunday of Lent, we saw Jesus in the desert preparing himself. In the second Sunday of Lent, we saw Jesus on the mountain where he was transfigured. And we have this Sunday, the third Sunday, where Jesus is coming to the temple. But then the sign, the scene in the temple is not so pleasing. My dear brothers and sisters, our God is the God of relationships. He has always desired that we grow into a strong relationship with him. The very fact when Adam and sin committed sin and when they were away from the Lord, the Lord always desired that his people would come back to him. And he did a lot to bring people back to him in and through the prophets and the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, it says that how God spoke through various and many prophets, but finally he spoke to his own people in and through his son. My dear brothers and sisters, what is the purpose of the law? Is it to make us live our life as a bondage? The question is this, but the answer is no. The Lord never desires that we live as bondage, but the Lord wants us 
to live a free and dignified life. In the first reading, God gave his people law through Moses. And what was the purpose of the law? The purpose of the law was very simple. It was that the people of Israel become a wiser nation. They strengthen their relationship with God. And they law or commandments were given for them to form into a sacred community. A community where they live as neighbors, respecting one another and ultimately showing the love to God in and through their love for one another. Remember the greatest question that was placed before Jesus, which is the greatest commandment. And Jesus said, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And also, love your neighbor as yourself. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this was the very purpose of the law. Given that the people grow into a sacred community where they love and respect God. Showing it in and through the way they live and communicate with one another. This was the very purpose of the law. Why the Lord gave them. Coming to the second reading, St. Paul tells us that Christ is the fullness of God's wisdom. My dear brothers and sisters, if you and I require this wisdom, then we need to open ourselves to Jesus Christ. And when we open ourselves to Jesus, we will be blessed with this divine wisdom which the scribes and the Pharisees were not aware of because they, were, they had closed themselves to the wisdom of Jesus and therefore they were not able to understand anything what Jesus was trying to convey them. So if you and I need this divine wisdom in our day-to-day -day life to understand God's purpose for me, then I need to open myself to the divine ways and thus this wisdom will help me to understand remember the the first thing that Solomon asked the Lord was not riches was not strength but he asked for wisdom what is our prayer when we wake up in the morning apart from thanking the Lord is it asking the Lord to give us the wisdom if not, then we better ask for the wisdom of God so that we understand God's ways and His purpose in our lives. My dear brothers and sisters, Gospel of John chapter 8 verse 12 says, Whoever receives Jesus will never be in darkness. So let us open ourselves and seek Christ. And when we have Christ within ourselves, we will never be in darkness. That is what St. Paul is urging to each one of us. Coming to the gospel passage, we see a different picture of Jesus. We have always seen Jesus' picture where he is shown a compassionate, where he is shown a loving. But today we see Jesus getting upset, losing his peace of mind when he enters the temple. When he enters the temple, he sees that the prayer or the house of prayer was turned into a marketplace. A temple where people came to connect themselves to the divine was turned into a marketplace. And this was not something which Jesus appreciated. And therefore Jesus made a whip out of a car and drove all of them out because that was not the very purpose of the temple. My dear brothers and sisters, the zeal of Jesus was distinguished him from the authorities. Jesus came to show what we really lacked. Jesus came to show all that what we did was not right. And today Jesus is showing 
not only to the authorities of his time but to each one of us and asking us have you turned the house of prayer into a marketplace and probably our answer will be no he is not talking probably about the church where we participate in the holy eucharist but he is talking about a very body which is the temple of the holy spirit when we receive the communion of communion jesus comes within ourselves so he's asking my brother my sister have you turned your body into a marketplace or have you turned or and kept the sanctity what is our answer i cannot answer this question we all need to answer so my dear brothers and sisters as we are journeying towards this season of lent to experience our lord's resurrection our lord's grace and strength all what the lord is asking from each one of us if at all we have not respected our bodies not given god the first preference or have turned our bodies into a marketplace a place where everything is there except god then we need to change and mend ourselves and this is the season which is the season of grace wherein the lord gives us his grace to transform ourselves more than transforming our outside appearances the lord is interested in transformation of our lives so as we participate in this holy eucharist let us ask the lord to give us the grace and strength to transform our lives and make our lives a house of prayer where we connect to our savior jesus christ amen let us now profess our faith i, I believe, believe in god, god the father almighty creator of heaven, heaven earth. and earth and, and jesus, jesus christ, christ his only his son, only son our, lord, our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit, spirit born of the virgin mary, mary suffered under pontius pilate, pilate was crucified died and was buried, buried. he descended into hell, hell. on the third day he rose again, again from, the dead. from the dead he ascended into, into heaven, heaven. And, and is seated, seated at the right, right hand of God, of God, the, God the Father Almighty. Almighty. From, From there, there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the, in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the communion of, of saints, saints, the forgiveness of sins, sins the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father Pope Francis, cardinals, bishops, priests and religious. We pray for our political leaders that they may work towards harmony and peace. We pray for peace in the world. We pray for the doctors, the nurses. We pray for the patients who are sick and suffering, especially those who are on their deathbeds. We pray for all the people who are administering to them. We pray for the teachers, the students. We pray for the youth. We pray for the jobless. We pray for all those to whom we have promised to pray for. We also bring before the Lord your prayers and petitions that you have placed before the Lord, asking the Lord to bless you with his grace and strength. In the silence of our hearts let us bring before the Lord everything that we need to offer him so that we walk joyfully in this season of grace to be in his presence God our loving father as we undertake this journey of grace to be in your presence we have placed before you our prayers and petitions asking you lord to bless us bless our efforts to come close in your presence bless our prayer our fasting and our alms giving may these tools give us the grace and strength to walk 
joyfully in this season of Lent with your grace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, your own, through your goodness, Lord, we bring bread of our labor and wine to cheer the heart, which will soon be filled for us with the life of your Son. Abba, Father, let us be and yours alone. Set our hearts, our spirits free. Make us, Lord, your own. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast, and serve with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Derek, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Blessed Apostles, with St. Francis de Sales, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, a God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by His divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual Communion Prayer My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my heart. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go and live Jesus.
Thanks be to God. Wishing each one of you a blessed day. Jesus gives me near the cross where a precious fountain free to all the healing stream flows from Calvary's fountain in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the Love and mercy for